serious about going. The problem they got here is they only have so much APU fuel. You don't want to burn that up. You see, it's the same fuel you have to use when the spacecraft re-enters. So you don't want to use up the fuel in that tank. So they probably got about a five minutes of hole here. There won't be a hole. They've changed their minds at launch Good. control. All They're systems are go. Keep right on going. All systems have been reported go for launch of Discovery. Less than one minute away now from the historic return of John Glenn to space. At T minus 31 seconds, the five onboard computers are going to assume automatic control of the shuttle. And they'll verify with one another, those computers, that everything is okay for launch and flight. Go for auto sequence start. Now watch your Discovery countdown clock there at T minus 16 seconds. And watch millions of gallons of water release to absorb the shock. Just watch it. T minus 15. Minus 10, 9, 8, we have a go for engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. Houston Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Six American heroes and one American legend. You can hear that sound for miles and miles around. You can feel it almost through your television set. T plus 48 seconds. They'll be at absolute maximum G-force. This is the maximum pressure. Much less pressure than John Glenn experienced in the old days, but an awful lot of it. Roger, go with throttle up. 53 seconds into the mission. Go with throttle up. Put the power on. If you've seen a launch before like this, you know the next dramatic thing to look for comes at about 1 minute 50 seconds, 2 minutes in, and that's the separation of the solid rocket boosters that's putting out that astonishing amount of energy at the moment they'll be finished they'll be empty they'll split off fly off literally and drop to earth we can probably put a countdown clock up one minute and 50 seconds into the flight discovery now at an altitude of 25 miles traveling at a speed of 2900 miles an hour the next event will be burnout and separation of Discovery's twin solid rocket boosters. And there they go. They're done for. What do you think, Wally Shiraw? That is Discovery really Houston something to see. To see those things separate on time. and they, The photography we're getting these days has improved, by the way, in the years we've been watching Capcom space Houston flights. still informing the crew that in the event of a single engine failure... Houston, performance nominal. Copy, performance nominal. Discovery could now reach the transatlantic abort site at Banjul. However, telemetry indicating all three engines continuing to perform well, and Discovery's performance to this point, two and a half minutes into the flight, has been as expected. Discovery now traveling at a speed of 3,500 miles per hour at an altitude of 43 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 70 miles. All systems are continuing to perform well. You're now listening to the voice of Mission Control, I believe. Gene Cernan, impressions? You know, I, when I saw that, uh, Peter, I changed my mind. I want to go. <laughs> you told me the other day you didn't want to go. Been well, there, done that, you said. I, no, I, I changed my mind. I, I, I haven't done this, so I, I think I want to go. I want to get in line. Okay. I really wonder what John's thinking now. He's just got to be, I mean, I, I, don't, I can't get into his head, but I want to ask him when he gets back. Norm Thagard, these first eight minutes are the riskiest in, in this phase of the flight. Explain to us why. When you're on a rocket, that's got to be the most dangerous part of anything. Uh, if, if there's something more dangerous than being on the rocket uh, as part of uh, a mission, I'd like to know what it is. Uh, they've already reached a major milestone. Getting rid of the solid rocket boosters means that uh, probability of success, I think, has gone way up. They ought to do fine. 
do that. Space yeah. Center, just about That's it, you, Wally, go ahead. Miles. The solid rocket was not something I was in favor of. It's the only way we can do it with the shuttle, but the trouble with the solid rocket is you can't turn it off, and so if something goes wrong, you can have a real problem. But once you pass that milestone, as Norm said, you're back to what we call normal rocketry, <laughs> if there's such a thing. And, and while, we are, while we're talking about the gentle way John Glenn might feel, I haven't talked yet today to our wonderful medical editor, Tim Johnson. Tim, uh, what's happening now? We're under G-force, as, uh, as you can see here on our, on our downrange and G-measurement computer here. How's John Glenn reacting to this? Have you any anticipation? Well, I think any physician would wonder how the cardiovascular system is doing. That is, as a normal person on Earth would react, as we're reacting, watching. Our palms are sweaty, the heart rate must be changing. I think the immediate effect that any physician would wonder about is what's happening to the cardiovascular system, especially in a 77-year-old person. This is actual flight information you're looking at in here, including the data in the cabin, including the G-force, uh, which the astronauts are presently experiencing. You can see on the upper right-hand side, four minutes, 54 seconds into the flight, the altitude, the speed, 6,600 miles per hour, and then on the left there, just off Five the minutes green into the mission, map three and a half minutes of, powered flight remaining. of the U.S., you can see actually what it looks like Every in terms of downrange. Millions of people all over the country watching this today. I think we can actually get a shot of John Glenn High School out there in New Concord, Ohio. There among any number of people who have gathered today to watch this launch. Reminding you, this is not the high school John Glenn went to, but this will remind you of how much of a hero he is at this high school and other things named after him. Well, just about three minutes of powered flight remaining. It is still so clear, such a beautiful day down there at the Cape, that using these long-range cameras that Wally Shira referred to, you can still see uh, the shuttle uh, up in the sky. Engine still up and running on board at Discovery. That call was that Discovery could make it to the transatlantic abort site at Banjul in the event that two engines should fail. But all three engines are continuing to perform as expected. Discovery now downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 385 miles, traveling at a speed of 9,100 miles per hour at an altitude of just about 68 miles. Let's have a look at it again. and as we.